Everyone wants to know which medication is going to be the best for harder, firmer erections. Hi, I'm Dr. Vina Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today I'm going to tell you which medication works best for treating erectile dysfunction. Now, many of you have probably heard of sildenafil or tadalafil, and these are the two most commonly prescribed medications for erectile dysfunction. But which one is more effective? What about other medications like avanafil or vardenafil? Are they any better? Now, before I go on, if you guys are watching and you've been watching me for some time, make sure you take a second to subscribe to the channel because I know that only about 20% of you are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you're enjoying this content, please do me a favor. It's a zero cost way to support the channel so you can get more free education each and every week. So sildenafil is sold under the brand name Viagra and Tadalafil is sold as Cialis, Vardenafil is sold as Levitra, and Avanafil is sold as Stendra. All of these are phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. Now I've talked about the mechanism of action for these medications many times before. So make sure you check out the videos where I discuss that. But simply the end product of taking any of these medications is that you have more increased blood flow to the penis, which then helps you achieve and maintain an erection for a longer period of time. Now these medications have been extensively studied and they're considered safe and effective treatments for erectile dysfunction. I've even talked about the safety of these medications in a prior video as well. So for most men, they're going to be something that you probably might consider if you're having less than optimal erections. Now there's two caveats. If you're told by your doctor that you can't have sex because your heart can't handle it, or if you're on medications like nitroglycerin for chest pain, then you can't take these medications. Let's get back to it. Which one is better? So in order to figure out which medication is more effective, researchers did what's called a comprehensive review and network meta-analysis. And in this study, they looked at 82 randomized controlled trials at 47,000 patients to look at the efficacy of these medications or how well they work. They looked at another 72 randomized controlled trials with over 20,000 patients to look specifically at the safety of these medications. Now, they also did what's called a trade-off analysis, which essentially looks at, okay, if you're getting efficacy, are you what are you trading off for in terms of safety? The most common one was looking at changes in erectile function by using a score called the International Index of Erectile Function, or the IIEF score. And this is a validated questionnaire that we use quite often in research to help us determine the presence and severity of erectile dysfunction. And I use it in my clinic as well. They also use others like the Global Assessment Questionnaire, the Sexual Encounter, profile, which essentially looks at how often you're having sex and how satisfying that was. And the analysis ultimately found that all of these medications were more effective than placebo or a sugar pill at improving erectile function. The most effective starting dosages was sildenafil, 50 milligrams, which improved erectile function by 47% compared to placebo. Other doses included Cialis or Tadalafil, 10 milligrams, which had a 33% improvement, Vardenafil, 10 milligrams, which had a 35% improvement, and Avanafil, 100 milligrams, which had the lowest at 29% improvement. Now, they did notice that higher doses of some of the medications didn't really enhance the efficacy compared to what they did at the starting doses. For example, sildenafil, 100 milligrams, showed 46% improvement, which was actually less than the 47% they had at 50 milligrams. Avanafil remained the same at 29% for a 200 milligram dose. Tadalafil increased to 38% at the 20 milligram dose and 44% at the 25 milligram dose. Vardenafil increased to 39% at the 20 milligram dose. Ultimately, more is not always better in terms of efficacy for every Every single person. Now, some people do absolutely notice a difference, but obviously sometimes people don't. In terms of safety, they looked at the rate of adverse events or side effects essentially for these medications. And most commonly what they saw were things like headache, flushing, dyspepsia, or what we call indigestion or upset stomach, and lastly, nasal congestion. And they found that actually Tadalafil 10 milligram had the lowest overall rate of any of these side effects, while Sildenafil 50 milligrams had the highest rate, and that was 18%, whereas that 10 milligram dose of Tadalafil was at 10%. So generally speaking, lower doses for all the medications had lower side effects. And when they did this trade-off analysis, they found that starting dosages of 50 milligrams had the greatest efficacy, but also had the highest rate of overall adverse events, whereas sildenafil 10 milligrams had intermediate efficacy and the lowest overall rate of adverse events. 
Vardenafil 10 and Avanafil 100 milligrams had similar overall adverse events, but they had really lower global efficacy, which makes sense why this is not very commonly prescribed. Also, they are a little bit more costly. Generally, based on this data, I would say that if you want to be as efficacious as possible, 50 milligrams of sildenafil might be the best choice. However, if you're worried about tolerating it or you're having bad side effects, sildenafil 10 milligrams might be the better option. Now, I've talked about the differences between these medications several times before, and it's really important to think about your lifestyle when you make these decisions. Do you eat before having sex? Do you prefer something that works very, very quickly or something that lasts longer? Because they are different in these two medications, and I want to make sure you think about that before you decide what is right for you. And as you notice here, 25 milligrams of Tadalafil was the best success rate. So oftentimes what I will do with patients who are not responding is put them on a daily dose of five milligrams of Tadalafil, and then off-label, you can do an additional 10 milligrams of Tadalafil or an additional 20 milligrams of sildenafil or 50 milligrams of sildenafil and see if that improves your overall erection when you take it as needed on demand. Ultimately, guys, there is no one size fits all. I wish there was, but there's not. And every person is going to be individual and unique in terms of how well they respond to certain medications and what side effects they have. And if you guys ever notice that you're having a side effect that you're not sure is a side effect, always bring it up to your doctor. We're never going to tell you, oh, why did you tell me this? The more information you give us, the better. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. If you do, please share this channel with your friends, let them know it exists because I think it's so helpful in demystifying a lot of the sexual health issues that we face each and every day. And as always, I'm going to take care of yourself because you're worth it.